Welcome back to year number 11, the college football national championship. UCF on one side, Cascade Valley on the other. It's time to get it on. Now, what's important to note is that we are technically the underdog here. We are maybe the higher ranked school from a rating standpoint, but from an actual rankings in the college football playoff and coaches poll, we are the number two team. UCF did not lose a single game this year. We did. That's on us. Now, in terms of who UCF played, they played number five Navy and beat them. They beat number 15 SMU, and they didn't really play anybody else that was ranked. But now they're about to find the number two team in the nation. We're going to see what they got. And then as a reminder, we lost our first game of the season, and I was like, oh, boy, it's going to be a wild one. And then we won every single game after that. So I'm kind of proud of how this team bounced back. I don't know if we've actually covered this yet, but just to go through this really quickly, from an all NCAA team, we ended up having Tyro Brown make it because, again, the Heisman winner, you would imagine he would be there. Uh, we're going to see Mr. Dylan Baker on a right guard spot, right tackle. We're going to see Chris Wade. We're also going to see Jira Sanders, Justin Duran on the defensive side, Marcel Wakefield, Christoph Houston. There's a whole lot of Cascade Valley players here. Rodriguez Gibson, Desmond Simmons, uh, DJ Mangiro, his first real year starting. He played incredibly well. Michael Lanier, everybody out here was on Cascade Valley. And then from the second team, Warren Ford ends up getting there. I'm kind of surprised, but he did miss a couple of games this season, so... I kind of get it, but he's second in the highest of voting. How are you going to put someone above him? And then as you work your way through it, you're going to find out we had Kendall Owens. We had Brian Wilkins. We had Jonas Shackelford, his senior season. He's been a fantastic player for us, moving around position after position. And then also Kendall Johnson uh, making it as well. And then from a freshman team, we're going to see Tyrell Brown, of course. We're going to see Mr. Debeon Gurley, which I'm super proud of him. Uh, Tyree May. We're also going to move our way down here and find that we have Mr. Morgan Williams and Travion Wilson. Both of those guys are massive pieces for us this year. As we move on to the award winners, Alex Caver, an absolute stud. I feel like this dude's been a 99 since he came in as a freshman at Alabama, and he dominated. He wins the Maxwell Award this year. Moving on to the Walter camp, you already know Tyrell Brown brought that one home. The Bidnarik, we're going to see Christoph Houston, but we also have Michael Lanier and Desmond Simmons both sitting behind him as true sophomores. We're loaded on defense. The Nagurski goes to Christoph Houston as well. The O'Brien goes to Alex Caver. The Doak Walker goes to Tyrell Brown. The Belitnikov is going to go to Aquano, who we just ended up facing in the previous game a very good receiver uh the Mackey goes to a lad out of ecu the raging cajuns get mr adam hicks at the outland award the remington goes to hicks as well the lombardi goes to keaton robinson the left end out of alabama a true freshman that's linebacker goes to christoph houston again he's racking up awards right now the thorpe goes to michael lanier with desmond simmons being right behind him the groza goes to death rage and we're gonna see the guy go to bastion with the best returner going to josh Wright. one day we'll get ourselves a guy back up here too Big game here for Cascade Valley in the national championship. Tyrell Brown healthy, but Warren Fullwood again, not healthy for this game. A lot of people have too is, is this the last game we're ever going to see from Warren Fullwood? Will he be back next season? If he does, that complicates a lot of things because we got some dudes that can play quarterback coming in. Donald again at the helm for us this afternoon. He's more than capable. He's been a stud in his career, but we've got to make sure that he stays healthy because if he goes down, it's Fertney as the next man up. Second and three here. Hand the ball off to Tyrell Brown. You love to see him back and hopefully he can stay healthy this entire game and lead us to a double. Back to the run game has been the best part of our team so far. And look at Tyro Brown looking pretty healthy right now. Second and two here. A lot of people going different ways. And look at Jalen Clark finding himself down around the 15-yard line. Donald pretty gas going right back to this little option here. Again, McDonald, plenty of time. He's unselfish. He's hit a Mikel Smith. He doesn't get nearly the time to shine that we really want to get him to. But look at McDonald sharing the ball. So far, what we've seen from this UCF team is not a lot on off. I mean, on defense. We'll see what their offense hopefully looks like. And a nice little bubble screen goes down here. And look at 84. Okay, they're making plays. Get our first look at Harper here. Drops back for a pass. Plenty of time. This offensive line looks elite because they're giving this dude all the time in the world. And he's going to find Shaw for a huge gain down the field. I get a quick adjustment here. The quarterback's going to keep this one. We have no one even in the same zip code as him. We're trying to get guys over. And it, of course, it's Christoph Houston making the tackle. We're very quickly learning that we have to watch their quarterback because he's been moving around a lot and making us pay. And oh my God, they just slipped that ball right past us. 39 is going to get him plenty of gain. We should have had him for a loss of five. Second and four. They go underneath. McMillan's going to find his way down to about third and short. Doing our best to get some pressure here. Harper and Shotgun nearly gets to jump off sides. They got a little bit of a QB read there, and Michael Lanier steps up with a huge stop to make it fourth and one. UCF is going to go for it. This is the four down territory, buddy. And not only did they go for it, Garland Shaw goes in untouched. A great play by them. So massive play by UCF, and now all of a sudden, things are looking a little interesting. Their offense is significantly better than their defense, but they don't have Jalen Clark. Jalen Clark is out here. Can anyone stop him? They bring him down, but 63 yards later, Cascade Valley's cruising. McDonald comes out, lining up under center. We got third and five here. He needs something. He throws it off his back foot, trying to go to the opposite side of the field. A little risky. Didn't work out, and we're kicking a field goal here. 
So the field goal is going to be up and it's going to be good. McDonald on the hold. We've got a three point lead and let's see if our defense can do better this time around. Going with a little bit of a QB read, uh, QB read option it looks like. And Lanier is going to hit Corey Harper super hard. But I mean, they're picking up big games. The first down, they go with the read option here. Houston gets thrown around. That doesn't really happen that often, but he gets right back up and brings him down. But this run game is pretty nice. First down again. Little run. They're sticking with the run game. They have been elite in the run. Second and short. Trying to shoot the gap. But I mean, Garland Shaw has just had misdirection after misdirection and leaving our defense just gas grasping for air. We're trying our best to shut this run game down, but it has not been anything easy. They go with an edge rush here, and Morgan Williams steps up. Second and 13 here. Another run. I mean, we're not surprised. They are running this football. It's like we're playing Navy right now. They're down three yards to go. Watch them running back out of the backfield. They go other ways. Simmons completely lost. Had his back turned him in. Zero forces Chris Jackson out. If we can just get some pressure on this quarterback, life would be so much easier. We get a little bit of pressure there, but Simmons gets burned, and Mike Taylor and UCF are going to have the lead. We don't right, want right now is to turn this ball over. Patrick McDonald has to get rid of it. We're going to kick a field goal. We wanted to try to bootleg out to the right, maybe extend the play some, but UCF knew what we wanted to do. So lining up for the field goal here again, should be pretty easy. Shepard has that one up. It is good. We have cut the lead to one, but UCF, they're the real deal. The first drive we had against their defense was a cakewalk. Since then, it's been a little bit more tough and McDonald's feeling the pressure. Another incomplete pass. We'll take the field goal, which should give us a lead, but it's not the touchdown we should have had. So two consecutive drives that both should have been touchdowns. Instead of being up big, we're up two here. Defense, got to do your job. Got the ball back with 143 on the clock. Plenty of time. That is a ball that should not have been thrown. We got risky. We threw a ball that did not need to be thrown in any way, stretch, or form. And now UCF has a chance to take the lead before half. Christoph Houston misses the tackle. That's pretty rare for him. And Garland Shaw picks up a major game. See up with a little adjustment here. Harper's been really good so far today. We keep Garland Shaw in check. A beautiful dot. And Jackson got literally every ounce of his body in bounds. They're keeping a lot of pressure on us right now. We got guys potentially trying to stop him here. Even if we hold him to a field goal, that's fine. We just cannot give up a touchdown. 104, they're in a situation where they can run the football now if they need to. They try to do that. We end up hitting the quarterback with two different players, and they are in the end zone. You hate to see it. One timeout remaining. We've been in the red zone four times. We only have a single touchdown to show for it. Just unacceptable at this point. First and goal, McDonald under center. Throws it off a UCF player's helmet. Tyrell Brown over the middle. They tip a wide open touchdown. Unbelievable defensive effort right now from UCF. We do not want to leave points on the board of the national championship game. So we're going to line up, kick the field goal. It is good. We're down to going in half, and I'm pretty sure UCF gets the ball in half. The good news is for Cascade Valley, UCF gets the ball at halftime. They aren't able to really do much of anything with it. So we have the ball at midfield after a pretty poor punt. Tyro Brown, though, the run game has just been stuffed. Got his guy Porter Ryan wide open. Porter Ryan, not fast, not quick, but he can run some routes. Antonio Vaughn is having press coverage. We have Roderick Johnson in a QB. We're in a little bit of a uh, wildcat, and we cannot actually change the play up. Unable to audible out of that play in any way, shape, or form. We didn't realize we were in a wildcat there as we picked that play, and uh, that definitely came to haunt us, but it is what it is. We did have Antonio Vaughn wide open. We just had no chance to really get it to him. McDonald sees a guy, throws one. Porter Ryan is down at the one. The defensive back looked absolutely lost out there. And McDonald's throw, which looked a little bit underthrown in my opinion, ends up getting completed. Tyro Brown walks it into the end zone. Just like that, we have the lead. Coach Merv McMurvin says, look, this is an opportunity to go for two here. If we get this two, it's not the seven points, but it is a nice little comfortable lead instead. McDonald has this guy, throws it underneath. Fernie is going to get that when we extend our lead to six. And again, it's not seven, but it's a little bit better than what we had. Trips right here. Delayed handoff again. Shaw is just fighting through the first couple of efforts of tackles. The Cascade Valley are a little nervous here. We'll be getting picked apart. They go underneath, though. We got guys ready for that one. It's fourth and goal. Imagine a field goal is coming up here. And that's exactly what UCF lines up for. Lining up for a field goal here. Okay, we'll take a false start in the offense, absolutely. Still a relatively easy field goal here for UCF despite the penalty. Uh, this should be pretty much a chip shot. This one is up. This one is down the middle and perfect, and they've cut the lead to three. Things get really interesting now for us. If we get a touchdown, we've cut our lead or extended our lead to 10, and all of a sudden, 
he gets a lot more dicey going into the fourth quarter Tyro Brown starting to heat up his last couple of runs have been great but this time it's going to be a QB keeper by our guy Patrick McDonald and McDonald extending the play we want him to get down but he just can't do it sometimes talking about the run game Patrick McDonald is actually our leading rusher this afternoon he has been fantastic with 77 and probably more coming second out seven to go they're sending a lot a dot to Jalen Clark McDonald with pressure coming was ready for that one two minutes left here in the third send Fernie over the touchdown vulture himself Bro, Derek Johnson in the game. Not exactly fast. We will take the nine yard rush from the big fella. We are marching down the field. No full wood, but still this team doing what they can. And Patrick McDonald, you love to see it. Finally sliding. Third quarter's winding down. We've had a slow, methodical drive that may lead to points for us in a big way. Antonio Vaughn in a quarterback right now. Not exactly what we were looking for, but Antonio Vaughn says, you know what? I'm going to make a play, coach. Antonio Vaughn extending the play, and he's in the end zone. Do what you can, young fella. If you're UCF, the time is now. They have got to find a way to convert some points that aren't a field goal because we have a 10 point lead going into the fourth. You have to wonder, do they get impatient at all here with Garland Shaw? He's been great. He's averaging about six yards per carry, but at some point, the passing game is what's going to really lead to them getting big points as McMillan picks up 15 more yards. Third quarter is winding down here. They go underneath right in front of Shackelford and Shackelford and all nine fingers brings him down for a gain of six. 10 point lead in the fourth quarter of the national championship game. Can Cascade Valley hold on here? in what has been one of the more hotly contested games they've had. And we're going to see Kendall Johnson bring down Barnwell. But again, UCF is carving us up, running and passing. We can't stop them. Feels like a run. They don't. We get pressure on the quarterback, but you got to give credit to Corey Harper. He has been in the face of pressure, delivering perfect passes. And if you're UCF's head coach, you have to be happy with him. 17 of 21, 200 plus passing yards. Doesn't really have a passing touchdown um, or too much in that department, but he has been fantastic for them. Michael Lanier, the ball across his face, pause if needed. He's got to get a hand up. And I misspoke. Harper does have one passing touchdown, but again, with how efficient he's been, you can't be mad at how he's played. Second and seven. They call a halfback draw, and it's a beautiful play call, but we do stop it and make it a third and tough. Third and five. What do they do here? We have press on him. I am shook. Patrick McDonald, who was sitting on the sidelines the last play as we saw Antonio Vaughn go for a touchdown. We see Tyro Brown in the 96 speed get to the edge. 200 plus rushing yards for this team without Warren Fullwood. Jalen Clark slides over a motion. This has been a staple for Cascade Valley, getting the wide receivers involved in big time plays. McDonald gets it out and Clark, a solid five yards. A touchdown will seal this game for Cascade Valley. I do not believe that we can lose this game if we score a touchdown here. We've got a long way to go before we can get quite to that spot. Coach Mervyn McMurvin looking for his fifth national championship here at Cascade Valley. And Patrick McDonald is trying to be the quarterback that brings it to him. And look at that great run. And with that run right there, putting us in this spot, we're going to start chewing the clock a little bit. We're moving the ball on the field. They're struggling to stop the run game. And it's up to them to do something. And look at Roderick Johnson nearly getting into the end zone. What a run. Every time you've been in the red zone, we've scored six total times we've been here, but only two of them have been touched on. Everything else has been a field goal. Tyrell Brown, great move, and he's down at the one, but he does have first and goal here. Coming on a four wide receiver set, we're making UCF respect the pass game too here. You know, we've run pretty much every single time. Tyrell Brown back in the end zone, and Cascade Valley gonna have a 10 point lead. This is the most important drive of the game right now if you're UCF. You have to pass the football, and Jonas Shackelford only has nine fingers, but he used every single one of them to force a turnover. The beauty of where we are is that even a field goal here is fine. It'll give us a 14-point lead. A touchdown obviously makes this game impossible, and Tyrell Brown has plans, and he's sticking to them. Under two minutes, Williams is going to slide in motion here. Well, Derek Johnson, not quite sure what exactly happened there, but it wasn't pretty. UCF does use the timeout here, stopping the clock at 150. But Tyrell Brown, a lot of speed. Not able to do anything on the edge, though. Only two yards here. UCF down to one final timeout here. But you know, we want to keep the ball on the ground. Hand it off to Tyro Brown. He goes up the middle. He almost has something, but he's going to be going nowhere. Two more yards from him makes it fourth and goal. Shepard has been absolutely a monster of field goals the past couple of weeks. He's been drilling every single one of them. He hits that one to extend our lead. I actually did the math incorrect. We're only up 13 at this point, but still, it'll be fine. The Cascade Valley. Coyotes are going to lift up Coach Mervyn McMurvin and let him know this is your fifth national championship at this prestigious school. Play the game. Antonio Vaughn takes it to the house. Wasn't even supposed to be there, but he lined up at quarterback and said, don't worry, coach. I got you. Woo! UCF, I'll give it up to Corey Harper. This is a team that was way better than we thought. I know they're the number one team in the nation. I know they're undefeated, but they didn't really play anybody. But they didn't have Tyrell Brown. 127 on the ground. Has some touchdowns. Has some receiving yards. 
And because of that, Coach Murphy Murphy gets his fifth crystal ball to hoist above his head. That man is wearing the same suit every time. Patrick McDonald stays here. Everyone said transfer. You're crazy for not transferring. Warren Forward goes down in the semifinal game. Patrick McDonald says, don't worry. I'm bringing another one home to Cascade Valley. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody you love them. Catch you guys on the next one.